Welcome to this series of lectures on the stiffness method, also known as the direct stiffness method. This is an extremely important method and it is the basis of the finite element method, one of the most widely used methods in engineering practice today. In this series, we will learn why the stiffness method is important. We will develop the stiffness matrices for various elements, learn how to incorporate them together to form a global stiffness matrix, and then use the governing equation to solve the structures. We'll also learn to code all this theory into a program to solve the structures. The stiffness method became popular in the mid 20th century as engineers were dealing with increasingly large and complex structures. Classical methods like force or flexibility methods quickly became impractical. What makes the stiffness method stand out is that it's systematic and works well with computers. This directly paved the way for finite element analysis, which you'll recognize as the backbone of modern engineering design software. The fundamental idea is actually quite simple. We look at how forces and displacements are related at key points. Each part of any structure, whether it's a truss member, a beam or a frame, has a stiffness matrix, and that defines how much force is needed to produce a certain displacement. We should note that in structures we don't only have straight line movements to consider, but we also have rotations. So displacement vectors include both translations and rotations. Similarly, the force vector includes not just forces, but also moments. We can write this relationship compactly as F equals K times D. The force equals the stiffness times the displacement. This simple equation is the building block of the entire method. This compact equation is what makes the method so powerful in general. Before we dive into the procedure, however, let's discuss some basic concepts. On the next few slides, we'll discuss the main concepts we need to understand before we discuss the procedure and start developing the stiffness matrices. First, we need a consistent sign convention. We take displacements as positive in the global x and y directions and rotations, which are anti-clockwise, as positive. Similarly, nodal forces and moments are positive when they act in these same directions. Similarly, nodal forces and moments are also positive when they act in these same directions. The stiffness matrix is built on these assumptions, and keeping the convention consistent is essential when we assemble the contributions from each part of the structure. We can also represent the moment like this, using two arrows. The stiffness method begins by dividing the structure into elements. These elements are the individual members or components of the structure, beams, truss bars, or frame members, and each of these connects two or more nodes. Nodes are assigned at any location in the structure where there is a change. For example, where we have boundary conditions, applied loads, or hinges, but they can also be placed where material or geometric properties change, such as a different cross-section or new material. In short, any point of interest in the structure is defined as a node. Let's see a few examples. So here we can see a simply supported beam with a point load. And if I divide that into nodes and elements, you can see that this is two elements because I've had to add a node at that point of interest where there's a point load. Obviously, I already put nodes where there were boundary conditions. In this truss, for example, I will put a node at every hinge and the elements are between these nodes. In trusses, the loads are at the hinges and therefore there won't be a need for me to define any additional nodes based on loads that are in the middle of the bar. However, I might have to add additional nodes if there is a change in the cross-section properties or materials, like in this case here. This is a cantilever with a point load at the end, but note that in the middle there is a change of cross-section. And that change of cross-section means that I do need to add a node at that point of interest. Each element will have its own stiffness matrix that defines how it resists deformation, as well as physical properties such as length, cross-sectional area, and the material stiffness, which is typically represented by Young's modulus. The behavior of the entire element can then be determined by how its end nodes displace under load. By focusing on nodal displacements and nodal forces, the stiffness method allows us to represent the entire structure in terms of a set of matrices. At each node, we need to define the possible ways it can move. 
And these are called degrees of freedom, or DOFs. These are the unknowns that we solve for in the stiffness method. The number and type of degrees of freedom at a node depend on the type of structure and whether the analysis is 1D, 2D, or 3D. In trusses, for example, each node usually has one translational degree of freedom in the axial direction of the member. In 2D structures, like beams and frames, each node typically has two translational degrees of freedom, parallel and perpendicular movement to the element, i.e. axial and shear, as well as one degree of freedom which is rotational, rotation about the out-of-plane axis. If we were to look at 3D structures like space frames, each node could have up to three degrees of freedom that are translational and three degrees of freedom that are rotational. Let's see what that means for the truss we saw in the slide earlier. If we start off with this truss that we divided into nodes and elements, we can take a closer look at the element between nodes one and two, element one. This is a truss element, so it'll only have forces and displacements in the axial direction. One at node one and one at node two. So two degrees of freedom in total for this element. Each element is represented mathematically by its stiffness matrix. This matrix defines the relationship between nodal displacements and nodal forces or moments. Its form depends on the element's physical properties, length, cross-sectional area, moment of inertia, and the material's Young's modulus. These govern how stiff the element is and how it resists deformation. By calculating each element's stiffness matrix, we can build up the structural behavior piece by piece. Each element stiffness matrix is first written in its own local coordinate system, which is aligned with the axis of the element. That makes the maths much simpler. But because every element may be oriented differently in the structure, we need to convert these local stiffness matrices into a global coordinate system. The global coordinate system is shared by the entire structure. If we look at the truss from before, the global coordinate system for the full structure is the global XY system. However, if we look at one of the diagonal members, its local coordinates are along the axis of the member, as you can see here. This transformation step ensures that all elements are described consistently, so they can be assembled together into one global stiffness matrix. Don't worry if any of these concepts seem difficult. We'll cover them all in great detail as we go through the lectures. The last fundamental concepts before we move on to the procedure are boundary conditions and applied loads. Boundary conditions, as you already know, describe how the structure is supported or restrained. For example, whether a point is fixed, pinned, or free to move. Applied loads are the forces or moments acting on the structure. In the stiffness method, both boundary conditions and loads are incorporated into the global system. They define how the structure interacts with its environment and are essential for accurately predicting the structural response. Now that we've covered the fundamental concepts, here's a summary of the stiffness method procedure. First, we divide the structure into elements and nodes. Next, we determine each element's stiffness matrix in its local coordinates. We then transform them into the global coordinate system. All element matrices are assembled into the global stiffness matrix for the entire structure. Boundary conditions and loads are then applied, which allows us to solve the global system of equations for nodal displacements and rotations. And finally, we use these results to calculate the element forces, moments, and support reactions. Following this structured sequence ensures we can handle even very complex indeterminate structures in a systematic and reliable way. And that brings us on neatly to the scope of this course. In this course, we'll be implementing the stiffness method using the matrix approach. The matrix approach is the base for all commercial packages dealing with structural analysis of frame structures, and it's a precursor for the finite element method. Anything which is not structural engineering software and is more general is most likely using finite element solvers. Now that we've completed this introduction and discussed the basic concepts, the structure of this series is as follows. We'll start off by developing the stiffness matrices for three basic structural elements, a bar or truss element, a beam and a frame element. We'll discuss how these elements combine to form a global stiffness matrix for the whole structure, 
and how we rotate individual elements from their local coordinate system to the global coordinate system. We will then develop the load vector. At this point, we will have all the variables we need to solve the equation and solve displacements. Once we've solved the displacements, we can find reactions and internal forces. We'll then exercise all of this knowledge by implementing the method in a truss, beam and frame. As this is matrix based, we will take advantage of mathematical solvers. My go-to for this kind of coding is MATLAB, and I'm lucky enough to have a subscription through my place of work. But an excellent and free alternative is Octave. It's free to download and I'll allow anyone to join in the fun as we go through this series of lectures. Octave is a high level language, primarily intended for numerical computations. It provides a convenient command line interface for solving linear and nonlinear problems numerically and for performing other numerical experiments using a language that is mostly compatible with MATLAB. You can find more on their website. And that brings us to the end of our introduction into the stiffness method. I hope you understood all the basic concepts and are ready for the next step. So join me next when we develop the stiffness matrix for a bar or truss element so that you can see how we build these matrices from the ground up. I look forward to taking that next step with you. Mm -hmm.